We are talking quarterbacks. Hello, everyone. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro with quarterbacks coach John D. Filippo, presented by the Rothman Institute at Jefferson. So let's get this straight. The Eagles lose an MVP candidate, gone for the year. Nick Foles steps in. Everything's smooth, John. How you doing? No doubt. I'm doing great. Doing How'd Nick great. play? How'd Nick play on Sunday? He played great. Yeah. You know, four touchdown games are starting to become the norm around here, which, <laughs> is, pretty, a, which is a good thing. It's and, amazing. Uh, we need to keep that going. So I thought he played within himself. I thought, you know, whenever you change quarterbacks, you worry about changing cadence at the line of scrimmage. You worry about huddle procedure. But, you know, obviously having Nick here as a veteran that's played a lot of football games, started a lot of football games, that wasn't an issue for us at all. I think fans hear cadence and huddle procedures, and they go, gosh, that must be really easy to – overcome is it a difficult process it is a difficult process because the o-line's been used to hearing carson's voice you know for the last two years so mm. whenever you you know put a new voice in there you know guys can get jumpy at times and our i thought our offensive line handled the change very very well and you know it's always difficult when you know you change quarterbacks in terms of just getting the play called and you know obviously carson's been playing a ton the last two years and, and nick did a great job of of preparing this week knowing the offense and being able to get the play out. we had some long play calls this week uh, you know, trying to shift in motion the Giants a little bit. John, how did you divide your time really from April when the players reported after the offseason conditioning was over to now with Carson and with Nick? How much time were you actually – and Nick didn't even play in the preseason. In training camp, he missed a lot of time. How much time were you able to give to Nick during the year? A good amount. I mean, a good amount because obviously we all meet together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whenever we drill work on the field, we're all doing it together and those things. So, you know, really the only difference between the starter and the number two is the amount of reps in practice. But when we're, do when we're off the field and we're practicing and drilling and all those things, you know, obviously Nick's involved in that as well, as long as it, in Nate Sudfeld as well. So, uh, you know, we do a good job, I think, here, all, of our, all the position coaches here of, of – being prepared for that opportunity in terms of guys are going to get hurt. Guys are going to have to go in and, and, and play. And, you know, when you're in there, we expect you to do your job and do it well. Where was Nick mentally? I mean, when we saw Nick, huge year in 2013, injuries in 2014, gone in 15 and 16. Where was he from just a confidence standpoint when you first started working with him? You know, I think Nick really has really enjoyed being back in this building. You know, obviously our coaching staff, I think, is very, very quarterback friendly. Obviously from the top down of our head coach, ROC, and myself. I think it's a very, very uh, unique room in terms of the character of that room, the way those guys work together on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, they're in there early, you know, going through all the blitzes, all the plays, all the looks that you're going to see that week against the defense that we're playing. And I think because of the unity you, we have in that room, I think it's, it's, it's positive for everybody, and that's why I think we're having some success. So prior to playing in L.A., how many actual reps with starting type players did Nick have in practice all year? Zero. <laughs> Literally zero. Zero. So how did he establish some timing with these guys? You know, it, it, we do routes on air. Okay. Uh, we try to do that as much as we can. One of my you favorite know. practice routines. Exactly. Yeah. You know, with the tight ends, with the receivers, with the backs, we do that. But at the same time, that's that's pretty that's pretty standard across the league where, you know, our practices aren't very long. I mean, they're usually two hours at the most. So, you know, and obviously the second team offense services the first team defense and vice versa. And, you know, Nick's been running that, that huddle. So he's been having a rapport with some of the receivers, but not all of them. And you're expected when you go in there and give the look for the defense, as Nick has been, you're, it's not just a going in there and, and, and just, you know, being lazy and, and forgetting your footwork and all those things, you're expected to work on your craft every day. And Nick took pr a lot of pride in that. I think that's why you saw a pretty clean game on, on Sunday. Before that, though, the coming in in the fourth quarter against the Rams, you're up in the coach's box. What did you expect from Nick? For him to go out and play well, mm -hmm. no doubt. I mean, it was it was a very unique deal. I mean, obviously, we're, we're really bummed for Carson. There's no doubt about it. Everyone in this building is bummed for Carson. But it's, a, you know, Lee and our head coach has said all year, it's a next man up mentality. And no one panicked. None of our players panicked. None of the coaches panicked. No one panicked when Nick went in because we know Nick's a great player, and he's going to go in there and do his job and do do his job to the best of his best of his ability, and he's prepared. So, we have all the faith in the world, Nick. Did Nick see a lot of blitzes on Sunday? Yes. So that's what you thought going in. The Giants showed you. Yes, the Giants actually showed us a little bit more pressure, I think, than they had showed, especially down in the red zone. They they brought they were bringing a lot of cover zero down in the red zone, yeah. which is an all-out blitz, uh, more so than we've seen this season. So, and, you know, that was kind of their mantra last year. And then they kind of calmed down a little bit because of some of the injuries, I think, on defense. But they, they brought the heat pretty good yesterday. And now he goes against the Raiders on Christmas night, and I would imagine that you expect more reps in practice, more timing, more confidence, better performance, more consistency in the repetition in the, in the technique. Absolutely. If we get another four TD game Monday night, we'll be happy. We'll be happy. Now, Nate Sudfeld is a six-foot-six-inch second-year player. 
Nobody out there knows about him. We have never seen him play. What can you tell us about him? Nate's doing great. I'll tell you, the, no, the number one thing that Nate has done a great job of is he has assimilated himself into our room because he loves football. Our, all of our guys in our quarterback room love football. They're obsessed with football. And if you're going to be a successful quarterback in this league, you have to have that trade or you have no chance. So, number one, he's assimilated himself in the room perfectly. Number two, he's done a great job of getting his lower body stronger. And when you get your lower body stronger, that naturally gives you more arm talent because you're allowed more torque. It allows your body to, to, to get more force you know, in your legs and, and get more behind the ball. So he's done a great job of developing his lower body strength. And number three, he's really taken advantage of the hour sessions that he and I go through before games, and, and they're, they're pretty tough. So he's, he's a really, really hard worker. So we're looking forward to his, you know, his continued development, and, and uh, we think he has a chance to be a very good player in this league. I would imagine, John, that if he has, if, if, if he has a chance to play this year, that might be one of the most enjoyable weeks of preparing a kid for his first NFL playing time that you would have. I would imagine as a teacher, you would really have a thrill doing that. Absolutely. It's, it's fun. He's fun. He's a fun guy to be around, fun guy to teach because he's a sponge. And it's fun when you can kind of mold young players that have skills. You know, very similar to Carson Wentz. You know, we got him the, as, a, as a young player, kind of molded him, helped him out in certain areas that we thought he needed help in. And, and obviously, you know, he's, he's playing very well. Well, it's a great story. Not many teams can, be, can survive the loss of a starting quarterback and – come out and throw four touchdown passes the next week. It's really a great story. The expectation level in our quarterback room is, is very, very high, whoever's mm -hmm. playing. So we, we don't care who's in there. We, we expect you to go in there and play and, and play well. So and distribute the football on time and accurately. John Filippo, thanks so much. Great stuff. John Filippo in studio presented by the Rothman Institute at Jefferson.